Well, hello and welcome to an extremely windy Decoy Lakes where I am sat on peg one on Oak Lake and we are taking a look at targeting those match winning carp down the edge, those bigger fish that really make a difference. And certainly with edge fishing over the last few months, I've changed mine dramatically and hopefully I'm gonna be able to give some tips for you to try as well. So let's hope the fish follow this wind. I'm probably gonna be wrestling this pole for most of the day, but if they're down here, it could be a really good day's fishing. Well, there we go. That's not a bad start at all. I did say we've put ourselves right down here on the end of the wind. So we are expecting a few fish and they can be pretty big here in Oak Lake. Although I don't think this one is massive, but we'll concentrate on getting it in and then we'll get into the real detail about catching these bonus fish down the edge. Well, I um, slightly underestimated that one. It is bigger than I thought, but it's a perfect example of what we're trying to show. These are the fish you really do need if you're gonna put a big weight together and if it behaves itself, it's a pretty average size fish for here at Oak Lake. They are known for being big and pretty angry sometimes. But what a start that is, I'll get it slipped in the net and then to start with, we will take a look at the all-important rig. Right, okay, so let's take a look at the all-important rigs. Now, I'm sure you've all seen many videos showing you margin fishing rigs, and they tend to be really simple and really strong and reliable. They're the basics you need for a margin fishing rig. So I will run through mine just in case anyone is really interested. So we'll start off with the elastic. Now, like I said, you're trying to catch big fish and hopefully lots of them. So if you haven't used slick elastic, I urge you to give it a try because the green slick is unbelievable. It's soft to start with, so you could catch two or three pound fish, but a couple of strips on the puller bung and it gets really powerful and you can catch fish to any sizes. But with elastics, if you've already got it elasticated up, just a nice, strong, reliable elastic. Coming down to main line. So I've got 018, or possibly even 023. Basically, your thick main line needs to be strong. It can get rubbed up against reeds and rushes. You put it through your net a lot. If that's gonna let you down, it's no good at all for when you're fishing for big fish. So a strong, reliable main line. I've got a 0.3 gram of a float, and this one is just a nice, thick, buoyant bristle. It's really windy out there. So I've got a hollow two mil bristle, so it's really easy for me to see the bites. Then we come down to nothing complicated in a shot and pattern. I've got a bulk of number eights with one dropper onto a four inch hook link and a size 12 hook, a nice strong big hook. So it doesn't really get complicated at all. The only change I've got on there is at the bottom, I've got an 016 hook link. So that's why you fish nice, thick, strong main line is because you can change your hook link to whatever you want. And to be honest with you, I've done that in all of my fishing, not just margin fishing. I've gone for thick main lines and then I fished a hook link that I want to target with the fish. So there you go, a quick look at the rig. Like I said, nothing complicated, but it's two things. It's really strong and it's really reliable. So we're gonna get another bait out there, ship out and see if there's another one waiting for us before we take a look at exactly where we're fishing today. Right, there we go, a couple of 
big fish in quick succession. This wind is clearly making a difference and pushing them down here. But I promise you after this, I'm gonna have a bad back and it really is making it hard to present. But it's working at the moment. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ship out and rebait for another fish hopefully. But in that time, what I wanna to talk to you about is probably the one thing that I've changed that's really made a difference in my fishing. Maybe two things, there's one coming later but it's where I start fishing when I go down the edge. So obviously when you're match fishing, you tend to go down the edge the last sort of couple of hours, let's say, and you wanna try and put a real big weight together. Certainly the last hour is really, really effective. But what I've found is if you can plumb up slightly deeper and off the bank, so where I'm fishing at the moment, we'd probably say is about three foot off, and when I plumb it with a plummet, it sort of drops down, certainly to about a foot deeper. And what you find is the fish will happily come in the swim earlier. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, it's probably not the best today because we're the only ones on here, it's not a match situation, and we've probably picked one of the best pegs to do it on. But in a match, what I've found is that you can probably get down there and fish, let's say, half an hour 45 minutes earlier maybe even sooner than that and the fish definitely feel a little bit more confident in the slightly deeper water before they really start coming up the bank and smashing the bait later on and that's when you want to finish really close in shallow water but promise you if you give it a little go just a couple of foot off it will make a difference to your catch rate. So I'm gonna carry on fishing here for now, and then throughout the day, we'll pick a different rig up. So next to me is this identical rig to what we showed you earlier, but it's fishing a lot shallower. And what we'll do as we progress through, and these fish get more and more confident later on in the day, we wanna end up catching where everyone wants to, right in the shallow water, up against the bank, and hopefully that's when you put a massive weight together. But I'm missing a few bites there already. So there's clearly a couple of fish there, I'm going to fish away now, hopefully it won't be too far into the future where you can show you another one of these big fish. <laughs> that didn't take too long at all and it's a few missed bites but it's a little bit hard to read with this big ripple point, it's creating a few waves and just to make it a little bit more enjoyable for us, it started to rain as well so what I would call perfect fishing conditions aren't perfect filming conditions so we're trying our best to make it look and not appear too harsher conditions but it is really good to catch a few fish in so this feels like another big fish and like i said just then definitely they come into that slightly deeper water earlier on before you can really push them up into that shallow water but what i'll do is stop talking concentrate on getting this one in and we should have another pretty decent decoy fish to show you. <laughs> that is a proper edge fish. I don't know what I'm going to give myself for that. Maybe sort of getting on towards double figures potentially. But that is what I love about this method. You don't need many of them. And when you get catching down the edge, big fish, you can really put a huge weight together. And if you're in a match, you can either extend your lead or certainly pull it back if you've not had a good start. So this is when the edge fishing in this style really comes into its own. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this one slipped into the net and then the next thing we're gonna take a look at is the bait itself. Right, so let's take a little break from the fishing to talk about the baits. And I'm gonna break it into two separate forms of bait. One is gonna be your feed bait and one is gonna be your hook bait. Now. Over the years, I think everyone is the same. The two that really stand out is gram bait or micro pellets. So your feed bait are classed as particles, really small that the fish can't get fed on, but they can really come in and compete to try and pick out these real small bits of food. So gram bait, you're not allowed to cup here at Decoy. So that's out of question. So what comes in, and actually probably my first choice anyway, is micro pellets, but over wetted sloppy pellet. Now I'll show you how to prepare these to get the best out of them, what I think I'm now settled on. So almost you want to try and, it sounds silly, but ruin them. So put them into a tub, like I've got here, and completely 
cover them in water. So that's got probably a mil to two mil of water, maybe even more covering the pellets. You'll be amazed how much water they will soak up. And then just leave them for 15 or so minutes and they'll soak most of that water in. And trust me, they're definitely not ruined. And what I do then is add a real good glug of your favorite liquid. I think today I've gone for a chocolate orange bait booster, but you can go for absolutely anything. But that does two things, it adds a little bit more liquid and it's heavy and it adds a little bit more flavor. And what you end up with after a while is pellets that you can really squeeze tight like I am there and they go into a ball, but as they hit the lake bed, they still break up into individual pellets. So like I said, you're getting baked down there where you want it on the bottom, but it breaks up nice and good. And that is really, really good. And there you go, like I said, they're really wet, but they're not ruined and they break into individual pellets. So there you go, pellets for the feed bait, certainly here at Decoin, perhaps anywhere, but if not, ground bait is just as good. And then we go on to the hook baits, is what I class now as your big particle baits. Now I'm really, really fond of the two that I've got here, either a bunch of dead maggots or a section or a whole worm. For me, they work absolutely amazing. A little bit with the, the dead maggots, I cover those in water and to that, I've added some goo. That just gives them an extra little bit of flavor in my opinion. That's probably my number one hook bait and what we've started on. But there's plenty of others as well, to be honest with you. Corn is loads of people's favorite. Big eight mil pellets, that works really well. But basically what you want on your hook is something really big, really heavy that stands out, that in amongst either your ground butt and your pellets, they can pick out and that's what they go for first. So get yourself a big heavy hook bait that you like and you should be good at putting it amongst that feed. So I'm not gonna catch anything sitting here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get another bait on, get out there and see if we can catch a few more fish. Well, we've got to show you this one. That is a proper Oak Lake mirror. <laughs> and amazingly, how, I'm not gonna say easy, but how well they come in when you've got the right tackle and the right balance. So there you go, that is the ones we are after. But what I'm gonna do is get this one slipped in the net. And then we're gonna talk you through the last point of this match masterclass, which is the way that we're feeding the swim. Right, okay, so let's talk about the last thing that I want to mention. And I said at the start, there's two things I've really changed in my margin fishing and I think it's made a difference. One of them is starting further off the bank when the fish are a bit more confident before they move into shallow water later. And the second one is the way that you feed your swim. So I'm going to put this deep rig down and I'm going to pretend now that we are in a match situation and we're perhaps 45 minutes, an hour on. So you're now thinking these fish are gonna really come into the margin. So the rig is exactly the same, but it's a little bit shallow. So if you don't use top kit markers, I really advise putting some on there. I just draw them inch intervals of a marker pen and we were fishing at 55 inches. And we're now fishing at just over 35 and right up against the bank. And this is where the feeding aspect comes in a bit. So I'm gonna bait up and talk to you at the same time and, and get out there. Now, nothing different about hook baits. Feeding wise, I used to be, and I think, you know, I think most people are, and certainly the last few years it's been really popular, is for the last hour is to get your big pot out and cup in huge amounts of either pellets or ground bait, depending whatever you've chosen to fish with. And yes, it works, you know. What happens is you get loads and loads of fish in your swim. You get tails up, vortexes, it looks absolutely amazing, but it becomes really awkward to fish. You get a lot of foul hooked fish, you get a lot of line bites. And what I've done recently, certainly over the last sort of six months, is just feed it how I normally would fishing a bit further out and just feed it with a little toss pot and try and set your trap 
to catch one fish. It's much neater. And I really don't believe after doing this for a, a while now that if I had three or four big cups of ground bait in there, I don't believe it would attract more fish. They are there because it's the end of the match. It's getting towards the time where they come right into the shallow margins. You know, they get used to us match anglers throwing bait in at the end. And it's where they naturally want to be. So I don't feel that the quantity of bait makes a difference in how many you catch. But what I do feel it makes a difference in is the way that you catch them. You want it nice and neat and you want one bite to be one fish hooked in the mouth. You get less fish, less problems, and it just becomes nice and neat. So that's set now. The trap is in there nicely. I would hope that it wouldn't take long for them fish, if they're not already, to drift up that slope into the shallow water. And hopefully we can have a nice clean bite and catch a few fish like this. So let's see what happens in the next few minutes. And hopefully we'll have another one of these big edge fish to show you. And there we go, that did not take long. Just after I finished talking, a few seconds and the float was buried. So hopefully we're not going to make it until soon. It's going to be hooked in the mouth and a nice clean fish. And I, I think you'll generally be amazed if you try this that certainly with micro pellets, they're so small. And even if all of those pellets have gone, then there's still the smell there and there'll still be enough little particles there to keep a fish interested until you put another little pile in when you go out again. And it is probably worth a mention, the only time nowadays I ever feed with a big pot, if I'm fishing on a really aggressive slope, I mean like a real angled slope, then every time you hook a fish and it spooks off, all your bait gets washed away. It goes down the slope and potentially in that situation, I would feed with a big pot every time because you need to get bait at the top of it and hold it there. But if you can find any sort of flat surface or even a small gradient, then this has been way better for me, just making it much cleaner, much less foul hooked fish. And it just results in more weight in your keep net because you waste so much time if you're foul hooking them and stuff like that. You, you just lose so many, it just wastes too much time. And I generally think for me, this is the way I'm gonna be going maybe, you know, until I find something else that's better, but it's been really good for me in the last few months. And this looks like a proper decoy edge fish. So I'm gonna stop talking, concentrate on getting it in. I'm gonna have another good one to show you. Whoa, it doesn't fit in the net. <laughs> well, that is a proper net filler. I probably should have used my bigger net, but we just squeezed him in and it is exactly what you want. You know, when they move into shallow water, big fish and lots of them, but this came on just that one little pot of pellets. And I generally don't believe, even if I put in, calm down, huge pots of ground bait, if it would attract more fish. I just think it's the right time and that's when they want to be there. So setting the trap neatly means that you just fish nice and clean and get less foul hooked fish. But there we go, what a beast that is. I'm gonna get it slipped in the net, set that trap again, because this is the time you can really put a run of fish together. Well, there we go. I'm going to call that one 
the last fish because it's a case of today if you could catch as many as you wanted to it's been absolutely ridiculous and although you wouldn't call this one a small fish it's one of the smaller ones today but we'll finish on a common to show you it's going to lively hopefully he's going to let me hold him up there we go one to finish on and that is pretty much how my margin fishing looks now i've changed it a little bit but certainly give yourself that little bit of extra time coming further off the bank think about the way you're feeding it and hopefully you too will have a few good days down the edge so that is it from me i hope you've enjoyed it don't forget to hit that like button think about subscribing and then drop us a comment about what you'd like to see covered in the next Match Masterclass.